Hello, hello, hello. I'm Meron Kalili, and this is Frontline, a show on DMTV about people who confront power to figure out how they do it. And in today's interview, which was recorded on November the 18th, 2022, I speak with Agnieszka Mroz. She's a worker in an Amazon factory in Poland, and she's also a union organizer. And Agnieszka and I had a wide-ranging chat about the difficult working conditions in Amazon that led to the creation of the union, about tactics on the shop floor that the union uses, what works, what doesn't, and the dirty tricks that Amazon uses to push them back, and why the struggle against Amazon is really the place for any activist citizen to fight against the brutalities of capitalism more generally. I hope you'll enjoy this interview. I certainly learned a lot from it. Here's Agnieszka. So my name is Agnieszka Mroz. I'm connecting with you from Poland, actually West Poland. Amazon came to Poland 2014 um, and I'm inside the warehouse since then. What exactly are you doing there? What's your role? Uh, right now I'm uh, working in a packing department, but Amazon shift and rotate uh, uh, workers a lot. So I did uh, working in the docking, I did to drive forklift, uh, forklift. So we started 2014 with um, uh, 30 workers. Uh, some of them actually worked in Amazon warehouses in France and Germany, were trained there. And when they came back, they quickly realized the working conditions are worse in Poland. Um, and because they saw unions in actions in France and Germany, they, they, they understood that that's the value, that, that this is our weapon as workers. So they said, yes, let's start organizing together in Poland. Could I ask you to describe what is it that's worse about the working conditions exactly in Poland compared to the other um, uh, countries where Amazon is present? Uh, if you go inside the warehouse, most of the warehouses in Europe look exactly the same. So uh, so what is worse, it's not really the type of work we're doing because we are doing exactly the same work like uh, in other countries, but uh, it's about legal frame, uh, which is make, making our organizing different. So first of all, uh, we have much lower wages than right. Western European wages, of course. Right. Uh, secondly, we work um, 24 hours, seven days a week, and we are not paid overtime for working Sunday and Saturday. We work 10-hour shifts also at night, and that's that's the difference. And and then the very important difference, very which is making our organizing dif uh, more difficult, is a very restricted strike laws in Poland, because in order to organize a legal strike in Poland, the law says that you need a vote, like a ballot of 50% of workers uh, who are going to vote on strike, but it's counted in the legal entity of Amazon Fulfillment Poland, which is 30,000 workers. So it's a, so we, in, in order to organize a legal strike, we would need 15,000 votes. Uh, that's uh, a bit unrealistic, but that, that's an absurd law we have in Poland. When you started working at Amazon, what were the existing unions, retail unions, etc., that you could join? And why the decision to make your own union rather than connect your struggle to that of um, workers from, from other retail companies? Amazon is anti-union in general. So they don't want to play this social dialogue. They haven't played that model of social dialogue unionism within in the big with the big unions because they just mm. didn't want have they don't want to have unions in the shop floor they call us third parties but we are not third parties we are workers in this shop floor so they cannot mm, mm, tell us that we have a, our own interest that we don't work in the interest of workers this is the strategy amazon was really exploring against unions uh, against big business unions uh, in the Western Europe, but also in the US. I interviewed Chris Smalls uh, on this same program, actually, uh, about two years ago, and he was describing some of the, the tactics and the, the, the protests, the walkouts, the strikes that they were organizing um, in Staten Island and New York. Tell me about some of the tactics that you've used in your struggle against Amazon. What are the, you know, what works 
what didn't work, why didn't it work, etc. Um, I tried to explain before that then the strike law in Poland is very restrictive, um, uh, but it doesn't mean we don't want to use law as a tool. Uh, right now, we are in the process of collecting votes in the strike referenda, which mean, but we use it more strategically. What what we would have to uh, collect fifteen thousand votes to have a right to uh, strike in Poland. But what what uh, laws allows us is right now traveling around all eleven warehouses in Poland and be present in the canteens, in the in front of the warehouse, talk to workers. So we also use it as a strategy of permanent rally, permanent picket, that we are there in the canteen, we talk to the workers during the breaks, and not only with before work, after work. So we have access to the warehouse. This is very important. Um, and we hope we can get as many votes as possible. But what is the value itself is just having access to our colleagues, uh, which Amazon usually is very um, strict, that uh, yeah. one from one site, one warehouse to the another warehouse, usually you don't have access. Um, and that that's... Sorry, the, the, so I understand right. This strike that you're now collecting votes for, this is the strike, um, the international uh, action for uh, make Amazon pay action for Black Friday on the 25th of November. Is that this right? is the we have a one demand right now. It was just it's just about higher wages. Uh, so we demand six Polish zloty more, uh, and of course it is a part of the Make Amazon Pay, pay campaign. Um, like because we want Amazon Pay, we want them to pay us high higher wages. But of course it also refers to the to the um, wage difference between. Western Europe and Eastern Europe. So we believe we, sh we um, deserve more. We believe also that uh, the wages Amazon offered this year from 3 till 7% in different countries in Europe are totally not um, answering the inflation, growing inflation, and our needs as workers to pay for their our families. Uh, so we uh, believe that the wages should be higher, and this is the first precondition. Uh, and in this way, yes, Amazon, we have to make Amazon pay uh, that as well. Within the um, last eight years, we experimented with different forms of organizing and struggling. Uh, there were the most powerful actions were taken by workers on the shop floor level, on, which were response, like a direct response to some restrictions or some new measurements introduced by Amazon. Just example, Amazon once came to the workers in the ship department. This is the uh, guys who load trucks uh, on the gates. And they said that if you um, violate some some regulations, you will um, make you will not you will be punished, and you will be not allowed to drive a forklift anymore. But they were very uh, not objective, so it actually it was a manager who could decide who was going to be punished or not. So what workers did, they collectively refused. Uh, so they kind of gave back the driving license for a forklift collectively. Or workers said, okay, so I'm not going to drive forklift if you're going to punish me on this non-objective uh, grant. So actually, it, the answer of the company was immediate. They, there was a top manager coming. They started to negotiate, negotiate about this, and they won. Another example of this kind of uh, actions on the shop floor were actioned by pickers. When the pickers were forced to do obligatory overtime. So uh, picker, can you explain what a picker does in Amazon? A picker in the uh, in the old school warehouses, when there when there's no robotics, they actually walk around all these little corridors when uh, items are stocked on the shelves, and then using by scanner they find the item and put it on the trolley and send items to the packing department. So actually, they they are those who collect items from the shelves. 
And usually they collect tw 12 or 15 items uh, to a box and send the box to packing department. And because pickers were forced to, to do obligatory overtime, which meant a shift, 12 hours shift on the night shift, they said, this is too much, we not agree with it. And they started to send one or two or three items to the box and send it to the packing department. And if you do, if you do it collectively, it's just paralyzing the conveyor belts, just doesn't provide packers with enough um, items. So this is kind of the most powerful actions that comes from understanding that working collectively in the different departments um, in the time when there's uh, anger and people understand that it's too much, they can directly affect the, the production inside the warehouse. Did it ever get to the point where you were doing things that actually affected the customer and would create uh, a customer services problem for Amazon? Like, I don't know, like a package that has half of what they bought in it when they received it. Ha has it ever escalated to that point? It escalated to the point that they were not able to send trucks on that shift, you know, this, uh, on that on time. It's it, it's difficult for us to say how it affects individual company, individual clients, but it definitely affects uh, the operation of the warehouse. Um, so, another forms of actions we uh, we um, supported, we've been part of, was a blockade, a very spectacular blockade uh, during May, uh, Black Friday and the peak of 2020, when the supporters, they just blocked the uh, zebra, uh, were walking around zebra crossing in front of the one warehouse and blocked the gate for trucks to coming in and out of the warehouse for at least three hours, um, which was... Uh, coordinated with leafletting inside the warehouse, inside the canteen, talking about our demands and talking about that, again, we make Amazon pay this way. And then we do a lot of leafletting actions. So we just there, we have a workers' newspaper, we circulate uh, leaflets regularly. So it's we organize the smaller picket lines quite regularly, just to inform workers about their rights or give example of that there is a strike uh, in Italy, for example, and we should all know about this. We should learn from this uh, inspiration. Um, so um, oh, there were other forms. There were um, also um, an action called Safe Package, which was about providing a particular tips to workers in different departments, how they can work slowly according to the health and safety rules. And that leaflet was part of Amazon Workers International campaign, was translated into German, French, Polish, and distributed um, on Black Friday at the same time in different countries. Work slowly. In other words, I'm trying to understand, what, what do you mean exactly by work slowly? You mean not overexert yourself to create people who are exhausted on the job? Amazon is putting a lot of pressure on workers to make a particular target of items per hour. So they would say you have to make 200 or 300 boxes per hour, depending on the department you work. So there we have a lot of targets and you have to really know what if it's small items, big items, how many per hour you have to do. But you have to do that. They expect you to do that. If you don't do that, you, the manager would come and would give you a negative feed, feedback for productivity. So this is the this is the reality we're facing on a daily basis. But on the other hand, they have a lot of rules that contradict with this pressure on these targets because they would, for example, tell you that you have to look on every item from six sides to make sure that the customer is not going is not getting a object which is uh, destroyed in a way or is something wrong with that or they would say you also have to follow a lot of uh, health and safety rules especially in COVID you know that was very visible because they expected us to not approach each other for two meters and still putting pressure on the productivity but we wanted to use it as a, as a, during the struggle says okay if they tell us drink water to not be dehydrated, it means that you have a right to go to get 
your bottle during work, or you have a right to go to the toilet without being uh, harassed by managers. You have a right to to clean your your uh, station. You have a right exactly to carefully look on every item from six sides to make sure we deliver for the clients what they want in a health way. So if it's if you organize this kind of actions collectively, not in, individually, it does does affect companies. And this is what's kind of form of resistance saying, yes, we should be served. We should be uh, treated better. What you've just described, I mean, it sounds, I'm sure it will sound to many ears like almost insane that in 2022, it sounds like modern slavery uh, in Yeshka, this situation. I mean, that, rationing the idea, how, how often you can go to the bathroom, uh, trying to have it both ways by telling you that you've got to check the item thoroughly, but you've got to meet the target, otherwise you get penalized. Tell me how that feels for you, the situation that you're in. Actually, organizing with our colleagues help us to survive this reality of work. So because the company wants you to work uh, on your individual productivity, to, to not approach, not talk to other workers, to just focus on work, work, work. Um, and they say, make history. <laughs> and and what, we, what we say, um, we are not, we don't want to be treated like this because you are a human being. So we have a right to, for example, talk to our colleagues uh, at work as well. And not, we are not robots. This is, of course, the many years slogans of the labor movement at Amazon. But we are not robots, but we are also not slaves. Workers don't like to be called like this. There's a lot of this patronizing approach also in the mainstream media when they present us, oh, it's a digital slavery. It's like algorithmic uh, hell. You know, all these descriptions, that's quite sexy for in the media, but they don't call to workers because the workers inside, we have our dignity and we don't want to be called slaves because if you call yourself slaves, it actually cut you from the perspective that you can organize and fight for improvement. And it dehumanizes so we, you, uh, which I, exactly. I, take point. I take your point. So we, yeah. we, we rather have to focus on this, that by making this connection. Organizing at the warehouse is all about making connections to others to break this isolation and just to think together what we can do about it. And actually that makes our 10 hour shift possible to survive, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, because you, you, we are, you, if you don't want to be another, you know, algorithm or appendix to the algorithm you, and you are a human being, then you have to find your community, your group, that when manager is coming to you on one-on-one -on -one talks, they love this one-on-one -on -one talks. And we say, no, we are not one-on-one. -on -one. We have our friend yeah. who is a picker working next to me, or we have a shop steward from the union who can come. You can, or after work, you call the union uh, phone that you can complain. Yeah. You just can share your story, you know? You know, what? What? that is, you're, you're not alone. So one-on-one -on -one talks think, are great for isolating the problem uh, rather than letting other people in on what's what's wrong. Yes, exactly. That's why Amazon is so open and union because we they know that in the union, we are not one against them, that we are right. building this collective force. Uh, so, uh, and of course they do respond. They, that's why they, they do repress our us. They, we have, uh, we had two shops, shop uh, steward, stewards of our union fired last year. They, as I said before, they put on us on different departments. They make our life harder and harder. Every time when a, a, a shop steward is like, um, uh, we, we got a lot of disciplinary letters as well, you know, so they let us know they watch us, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's, it also means that they are afraid of what we are doing and that we are kind of, doing our job good but, but help me understand this you, you've talked up to now in terms of us and them um the management and the workers i presume you've got good respectful relationships with some people in the management in terms of that there is a like a, a bit of give and take or is it is it that is it just antagonistic every day that you're coming in like what the hell's going to happen today 
Um, I mean, it, it, take me through like what's the, what's the psychology of it in a typical working day for you? I I would say it's very antagonistic to the extent that a lot of my colleagues, when you know, when you go by bus and you see the warehouse approaching, a lot of my colleagues would say, "Oh my god, I have a stomach pain. I don't want to go there." Like again, I'm here. Like people just just uh, feel this pressure on their bodies from the very beginning. Uh, and also most of the, the workers would not work longer than three or four years because your body is so used um, used so much that you look for any kind of alternative. If you find an alternative, you just go. Um, but um, I want to add that the structure at Amazon is very flat. So basically it's a warehouse workers and leaders and managers and very few of them. So you don't have this strong hierarchy between uh, regular workers. We all making the same wage. We are work working the same hours. Uh, so in the warehouse when there is like 5,000 workers, 80, 90% would be on the same job the, in the contract, you know? So it's very flat, the structure. Uh, but also, mm, if you're working inside, you also, we call it uh, exploitation with smile because the managers would not shout at you. Yeah. They would come to you and with smile, they will tell you, how can I help you? You're not making right, like you are slowing down today. So they are not antagonistic in your face, but actually, you know, all the tools, scanner, uh, the way they measure our work through scanners and computers is just, it just means total control and of our speed. And if you slow down, they would, with smile, com come to you and say, oh, here is a disciplinary not letter, because we noticed that you didn't work for eight minutes here, seven minutes there. 20 minutes, oh no, not even 20, like five minutes here. You And then they take a day, your day off, and they accuse you that you made additional 40 minutes break in your time because they add up times when they see that you didn't scan at that time. And it's all made by computers and programs. So actually you can maybe uh, talk nicely to your manager, but you know that, man that, that manager will come to you and give you this disciplinary letters because the system print them out and this is his job, right? To discipline you when you slow down. Hmm. So, so that this is, this is uh, uh, as I said, wage is a problem, low wages, not that, that totally um, compatible with the huge uh, profits we're making, but also the, the uh, second demand is about uh, not uh, treating us like a robot and not um, controlling us uh, through robots because we don't want to be controlled by this algorithm as well because this makes our work hell. But there may be some people watching this that say, well, this sounds awful. It's wonderful that Agnieszka is pushing for better conditions for her and her colleagues. But if it's so terrible, she's been there since 2014, why does she stay? Surely there are other things that she can do. I mean, perhaps you can shed a little light on your own, if, you, if, you, if you're willing, your own personal situation that, um, that, that makes this your choice of work. Okay, so I want to say that the... We talk to our colleagues, so we know our stories. You have a lot of time at work to ask, where did you work before? Or what, what would you like to work? And a lot of my colleagues say that we worked in a, where a smaller warehouse or like smaller factory and the conditions were even worse, you know? So they, they, as, they have this experience, but it doesn't mean they don't like it, the conditions we are working in now. They say we have to stay here not quit and look for alternatives because we have a saying in Polish that you can from a little rain end up under the pipe with a <laughs> strong water coming on your head. I'm not sure if that's clear in, in English, but but actually yeah, we, we say it's better to stay here and improve. And we hope that because Amazon is so big and so influential that the important struggle for the for the con improving the conditions of all workers is in this hubs, in logistics points, 
it's not only Amazon. There are a few more companies that actually try to set up conditions in the so- whole sectors. So if we are there and we, and we want to learn how they discipline workers, what kind of tools they use it, how they improve the improvements, we also would understand what is ha- what's the happening in the so- whole sector. And we can, of course, organize, try to organize with workers from different other warehouses, other companies. Mm. So, so it's not, um, this is this kind of liberal uh, approach. If you don't like it, find better place. But some of my colleagues worked 15 workplaces like this. There's like 11 uh, special economic uh, zones in Poland I explained before. So when most of the workplaces look like this, and we are millions of Polish people working in this in this uh, condition. So I believe as that the challenge for labor movement and for us as labor activists is not to look for individual solutions, individual careers, but to go back to these places, even find job if you can, even like sh- sh- for shorter time. Um, I think that's also an um, uh, exciting task for newcomers in the labor movement, especially young people, because you really... Uh, it's good to read about how capitalism is working. It's, so, it's really good to know theory, but the, it's, a, it's really life-changing experience if you go into factories, if you go to work, uh, warehouses and try to yourself break this isolation, alienation. You can read about in very important books for us as labor movement, but you really have to experience this um, to really... Uh, and, the, and take this challenge of changing the world, fighting capitalist exploitation for for real. So that's yeah. So it's the center of the storm. Yeah, and Amazon being such a such a big company and such an important company and such a prominent company, um, it, it, I mean that's where the that's where the fight really is. And you get you you, you get firsthand knowledge of all these mechanisms of exploitation or control whichever way you look at it the digital um you know the, the digital surveillance and, and so on you 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 start to understand how they control the workers because probably other places are much further behind in terms of how other other manufacturing companies or retail companies um further behind in terms of uh, how they manage these manage and, exactly, these and from that experience actually you can be um, uh, you can join the movement because the movement is growing, right? We can really yeah. see like if you look at the longer perspective. You know, Amazon is operating since the nineties uh, in Europe. Ninety eight was the first warehouse. It took really time for us to to well, for the labor movement to start doing things. But there's so many exciting new initiatives that are happening in the last years. Look at the situation in the US, but not only you know there's, there's grassroots movements. There are actually in every country in Europe when the Amazon is, you can find people trying to different strategies. We are different, right? So there's some bigger unions, smaller unions, direct action people, like more social movements, people who would try to build coalition between labor movements and environmental movements and all this. So there's so many things you can, so many points where you can. Uh, became a member of this movement. Uh, of course, mm. we say as workers that the most powerful is this position to be inside and talk to other workers and build this movement from the inside. But I would say for uh, for those who are starting in the labor movement, I think it's really a exciting also challenge, right? Because you can get in and also easily connect right now with this uh, networks we are connected you can you can find our unions different unions in social media you can read about us media is uh, willing to ask us for interview because amazon is a a big player so there is a space we can talk about our struggles and i think this movement can make a difference and it's growing It's it's growing and make amazon pay and these actions at black fridays uh, they're also one, one leg we we stand on. Well, I would like to speak about those actions in, in a second, just quickly. But the um, just help me understand one thing: how many people you've got? Ten thousand people in the uh, warehouse in Poland. Is that right? About ten thousand temp and permanent. 
It's changing, uh, of course, uh, depending on the peak time, let's say uh, 7,000, 8,000, uh, yeah, altogether 30,000 workers in Poland in uh, 11 warehouses. And how many of those people are active in, in the union um, that's specific to Amazon? In my union, there's 1,000 member right now, but because of the high turnover, people come and go. So actually we had three times more who went through this experience of doing things together. Sometimes they were temp workers, they join us, they took part in the actions, they distribute leaflets. And also the hope is that when they meet us, like when we do things together and we have this experience of breaking this alienation and isolation, of, uh, they go to other workplaces. They It's all about circulating the struggle, right? So... Mm -hmm. we, this is also a good starting point. So we don't see this is uh, our defeat that this 4,000 who went through our ranks are gone. We try to track, we try to follow them. And those who are active, they are now truck drivers. They work in delivery sectors. They work in other factories. They call us for advice. And this is the way we're networking with other people from from other workplaces. You talked earlier about how Amazon uses digital tools to, to monitor its workers and how long they're working, et cetera. But um, you guys have also got digital tools of your own to be able to organize. Can you speak a little bit about that? What are the what are the applications or services that you use to, to organize your efforts? I uh, said before that nearly every warehouse in Europe and Amazon warehouse looks the same, right? Uh, so it's it, for workers coming from different countries who don't speak the same language. And usually, you know, you know, when you're a worker, it's where, where, warehouse worker, most of people don't speak any foreign language, right? So when we meet as a part of Amazon Workers International, sometimes we need six, seven translation language translators we, because we speak different languages. But actually... There's Amazon slang, you know, each worker knows speaker, packers, and all this surveillance tools. We They use this in English and all warehouses. So it's easily to talk to us and understand each other, what we are talking about with a slight help of either translators or some tools. So, yeah, of course, we do, we do use social media to organize meetings online, to to talk to each other, automatic translations. Uh, there's no one platform, but uh, definitely I would say uh, we are well connected. And um, it's the information about that in one warehouse in Italy, there's something happening or there was a continued occupation this summer in the UK. So we very soon knew about this and not through the media, but we, because we, we knew where to ask and under, and then understand how workers organize, how they organize these canteen occupations this summer, what was the results, what were kind of repression and so on. So mm -hmm. I think also because Amazon is, uh, it's really a global company, right? Most of the decisions are not made on the national levels and most of the policies are the same. So when, when they introduce uh, some policy that, for example, we are allowed to have mobile phones right now after tornado uh, in the US. Uh, where, so actually they changed the policy after this uh, disaster there where workers didn't have phones and were not oh, informed no. about conditions. Mm -hmm. That law was introduced in Poland, Slovakia, Czech, Czech, Czech Republic and Italy at the, around the same time. So mm -hmm. it's easy. So that also helped us to to build international movement because we have the same problems and the company is answering to our demands also um, at, at one level. Okay, I, I, I'm conscious of time here, but I would just like to talk a, a little bit about Make Amazon Pay, which is the worldwide um, action with many uh, unions and Amazon affiliated unions across the world uh, organized uh, by our sister organization, the Progressive International. And that's for Black Friday, which is the first first day, basically, of the Christmas shopping season, a very important moment for Amazon. The company, um, they're calling for a strike on that day. If I recall correctly, Anishka, um, there were previous, in there were initiatives like this in the past, which also related to consumer boycotts, 
etc. Not asking people not to buy anything from Amazon from a certain day. How did that go? Did that make an impact at all? I personally believe that uh, it's much better to support organized labor movement to go uh, than to go on individualistic boycott, consumer boycott. You know. But as long as this form of networking and campaigning is going along with what we do in warehouses, that also helps us, you know, because that brings attention, that gives us space to talk about our our problems of us as workers. So I see that Make Amazon Pay campaign is just this space, you know, it's not one campaign, it's a space where people coming from different traditions from different unions can use the one slogan that we all agree we're on we the amazon should pay you know for, the, for high wages for climate destruction for taxes and so on so on so um i think as long as um in different countries what work, workers who organize can kind of include the campaign in their regular ongoing organizing with this which is happening you know, as i said that is happening in the last years in different countries. That it's just, it's additional space that we can tell about this uh, str- struggles uh, in public and then make this uh, connections. But we also have to be careful only about pure symbolic actions uh, because they do not. I believe they do not affect. Uh, and also, I said before that some uh, some. Uh, the symbolic a- action could talk about workers as these digital slaves, you know, the scandalization of the working condition. We as Amazon Workers International, we want to make clear that this is not the way, the best way of talking uh, about uh, d- describing the situation. It's not helpful, you know. Uh, so I think if if these kind of campaigns have connection, and I think make Amazon managed to establish these connections in different countries and gave us also a space to see it as one of our campaigns we are involved in. They are, they, they're great. We need, we need support, but we also understand, we have to understand where the strengths of this movement come from. And we would say, always say that it comes from workers organizing, but these workers, of course, they need support, they need um, support in very different ways, you know, also yeah. in symbolic ways, but we have to always build this connection. So what, in your view, is the best way to communicate this, um, you know, communicate the, the, the struggle of Amazon workers worldwide in a way that Talk- isn't dehumanizing and demoralizing for workers and victimizing? Uh, the best way is to talk about struggles that are happening. They do. They are exciting uh, cases, campaigns uh, every year. Uh, so it, it's all about making a small research, you know, but uh, to collect these experiences, uh, to, to show that workers are able, you know, to make demands. They are able to make actions and different actions. Could be legal strike or could be direct action, you know, but... Mm. It's it's not as I said it's not difficult to find these examples you know it's not difficult to find us workers organizing and uh, so I think if you as long as you focus on struggle mm. if you say that demands of these workers in different countries are important and that's why as outside activists you can say let's create a space that these demands will are heard and this is for me make what to make Amazon pay, campaign is about so. Mm. So, yeah, support, if I can make an appeal here um, of uh, to all uh, everyone listening to us, yes, support this action, but also try to not stay on this, this symbolic level. If you can, uh, go in front of the warehouse, Amazon warehouse on that day, because you might be surprised, but because on that day, workers could distribute leaflet, they make hang banners, so there are, uh, there's hundreds, of Amazon warehouses all over. Uh, just read if there's a mm, strike around or action. Maybe workers there need support, financial support, so there's strike funds. Maybe they need people to come at four o'clock in the morning before the morning shift to just help distributing leaflets, um, come to the picket lines, uh, try to uh, try to be uh, involved. 
And if you can, just go start working on Amazon. It's not difficult. And you can have this experience yourself. You can connect with us. You can connect uh, with local unions and make this movement growing. Is there a place where people can go in order to to see what's needed? Um, to see if they if they can... If they if they're sitting at home, for example, and they don't have the ability to join the protests, um, to be able to send some money, as you said, to the strike fund or to support them. Amazon Workers is, uh, International has its blog. We are also on social media. Um, I uh, maybe can share here in the chat, or later we can put the the link. Uh, the link. Uh, we are a network, so which means we have a committee, which are the, in this committee, there are workers from different countries. So even if we don't have uh, people from your town or your direct uh, warehouse, we will know how to put, how to connect with, uh, um, with local organizing how, um, in, in your region. So get in touch, okay. Amazon Workers International, Facebook, Twitter, and we have our blog as well. Amazon Works International. We'll have all those links um, down there in the description. That's fantastic. And Yeshka, thank you so much for joining us. It's been really educational and our full support and solidarity. And thank you for sharing your the details of your struggle. It's really, really an honor to listen to you. Thank you. Make Amazon pay and we all deserve better. Thank you. Um, just some, something separate before we before we sign off i was just thinking of something it's just a random idea that now you're here i want to throw on you just one minute you know in the way that when, whenever you, you buy something from amazon you, you can you get the option it's just a pr thing but it's like oh would you like to donate to this charity have you seen that amazon smile it would be amazing if there was a way of saying hey would you like to donate to amazon amazon workers union for every purchase <laughs> if there was a technical like a plug-in or something that you that people could install with that with every amazon purchase five percent goes to an amazon workers unit or, or an additional five percent i think i don't know it's just a thought <laughs> you know, to get we need some uh tech workers to help yes. uh, with that but uh, we do have their tech, their tech workers coalition. There are also people in Seattle uh, working uh, at Amazon headquarters who are in favor. We uh, are trying to build a better world together. Uh, that's a great idea. But also just find in your local language, if there's a union, maybe they do crowdfunding. They, they tell, uh, you know, that what are their needs. I think it's easy to find that. Uh, um, and if not, we we help you to yes. find it. We'll put the links in the description. Thank you. Thank you again.